This is the reality show, a slightly different format today. On the program, St. Lucia's best Olympic medal hope, Levin Spencer, has been relaxing and feted at home. She is now a Goodwill Ambassador, appointed by the St. Lucia Hotel and Tourism Association. Levin Spencer will speak to us shortly. This is our reality, Calabash TV. And tonight, Olympian Levin Spencer at home for the first time since winning gold at the 2019 Panam Games in Lima. We caught up with Levin at the Bay Gardens Beach Resort, where she was a guest of honor. How special is Juni Creole, and what are your favorite beats? Uh, every year, I look forward to coming to Sandwich Shop for Juni Creole. 90% um, of the time, I'm in the US or in Europe, and a lot of the music and the food and the culture, you know, it's it's not in the US and it's not in Europe. So I'm always looking forward to just the Creole speaking and, you know, having to eat buyo and like all the, you know, the Creole snacks like tablet or golden apple in sauce or whether it's bread nut. So yesterday, you know, I ate, well, not yesterday, but Sunday, I ate pretty much almost anything you could think of that was Creole. So um, yeah, I look forward to the food and just the music in general. There were golden apple in sauce, golden apple in jam. They had like tablet, they had bread nut, ice lolly, icicles, green fig and salt fish, um, smoke herring, pigtail with dumpling, that cane, that coconut, that pretty much everything. They actually made local bread as well in the drum. So all of that. So it was like a really good experience and you know, a wide variety of things to choose from. So. Yeah, I pretty much had a lot to eat and I was so stuffed that I couldn't go anywhere else to like, you know, try to enjoy it. But I think I had a great time with friends and family. All right, so when you travel, how much do you miss what is uniquely St. Lucian? For example, that kind of taste of St. Lucian, how much do you miss that? Well, I miss it a lot. That's why, you know, every time I'm on my break, you know, I'm almost sure to be here during the um, Jeune Creole and most likely Christmas as well, because Christmas and Jeune Creole, it's you know it's different in the u.s and you don't really get that overseas so i try to be back home and especially independence as well too so um the main the main days the main activities the main events i try to be back for that because it's, it's totally different when it comes to our culture and the american culture this time coming back was a little different um it, it's been a while but um you know when i when i got to st lucia at the airport I was met with uh, some of the officials and SLHTA um, officials as well because they just made me, you know, the Goodwill Ambassador. So um, I had a, a warm welcome. Um, you know, I felt really honored to be the first Goodwill Ambassador for them. So I think in that aspect, it was a little different knowing that it wasn't necessarily, you know, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, but it's actually uh, SLHTA put it on this. Uh, kind gesture. So in that sense, it was kind of different and I really appreciate it. So what does a Goodwill Ambassador do? Um, we, we have a lot going on right now. Um, we're still in the process of working things, but uh, some other things we're looking at and I'm really eager. Uh, I'm looking I'm looking forward to working with them. Some of the things we're looking at is, you know, uh, raising funds and working with uh, chari charity, um, charity things, um, whether it's foundation or whether you know helping out finding um, areas where I don't know we could help out kids or I guess charities in needs and just just stuff where it has to do with I guess non-profit sometimes so I'm looking forward to working with, with them on that. How do you plan to use your studies after you retire from active competition? Yeah I, I'm really thrilled about it because at school I studied health promotion and I love working with adults um, I love working with kids. I, I, work, I love working with kids, but I really love working with the elderly. So I'm, I'm happy, like you know, they chose me to be the good ambassador because I was like, oh, that fits in right in what I studied at school, and I really look forward to see what comes out from it. How can you use your studies in health promotion to help us reduce Celusia's high rate of uh, diabetes and uh, hypertension? Um, well, I have a lot of plans in mind, especially after retirement. People always ask me, oh, what do you want to do when you retire? You know, my number one goal maybe, you know, probably to do something in the area of public health because, like I said, you know, that's what I studied. And whether, you know, it's working with the elderly or in the 
health ministry or you know but I like interacting with people so I'm not necessarily sitting at a desk in an office so I love working with people and where I could help people out um, so that would be one aspect of it um, a lot of people also ask me about wanting to coach them as well because being such a decorated athlete and I've been doing so well in the sport uh, many of the young athletes you know look up to me and they always ask for my advice and my help so I'm thinking of maybe if I go in the field of sports as well uh, being certified with a level 3 IWF jumps level coaching um, certificate I think I could help in that area as well um, even if I don't become a coach uh, like I did last year, I'm tr I'm trying to see if I could uh, make the clinic an uh, annual thing. Not too bad. Well, today we just have the Flo Levin Spencer High Jump Clinic. Um, you know, it's a clinic in collaboration with Flo, just high jump and students from primary schools and secondary schools. Um, you know, I'm hoping that. It's, it's the first and I'm hoping, you know, along with Flo, that it will be a continuation of this event. Um, you know, whenever I'm back, I'll love to continue with the kids and I hope, you know, it's not just a one-time thing, hopefully they could continue. And today we just want to teach, you know, the basics of high jump, um, especially at the primary school level, it's not being contested. So. And I always feel like you need to start at an early age. For me, I started when I was in secondary school already, which I thought was late. So for them, for those of them who are here from the primary schools, I think it's a good start and it's never too early to start. So hopefully, you know, they could learn the basics and they could get, you know, a little more involved in high jumping. Remember, we want to get her front up, over, turn. You don't try to turn from on the ground or flying to the back. Also, you know, I just want to thank the coaches for being here. You know, it, it would not have been a success without them being here. So I'm happy they turned out as well to help the kids as well. So overall, I think it's a good turnout and they, I think they've, they've learned quite a lot. But I'm hoping that they could continue to put it into practice. Put your hands on your hip. Just give me a nice little push back and hold. Uh, we did a, a high jump clinic in collaboration with Flo and I think it was a success. So just little things, little areas, whether it's whether it's been an ambassador for St. Lucia, whether it's uh, following my career where I studied health promotion or whether it's sports wise. So I think I have a lot of doors open, a lot of options. So um, I guess after retirement we're going to go into it a little more depth to see what I really want to do. Hi, Jonathan Emmanuel, certified IWF coach specialized in jumps. Um, I'm official one of the registered coaches. She's for the Elite Track and Field Club. I also knew Lovan when she started off from Enchipo School because she was part of Elite. We all started off under Gregory Lovan and I believe it's a very good initiative for Lovan and Flo to have this clinic for the young ladies from the ages of 10 to 17. Um, I was just in discussion with Coach Les Paris that I'm looking forward for a part two because you could have seen the enthusiasm in, in, the, in the participants. They, were, they gave a good listening ear, they were attentive, they demonstrated good skills, good, good drills, good execution of jumps at, at, the, at, at the end of the day's session. Um, from what I, I see here today, I, I could identify some good talent that I, I could tell you um, the sport of high jump will continue to fly in St. Lucia. It makes me feel happy because, um, you know, especially being on the circuit for so long and when I go out to represent St. Lucia to see our size, of the size of our team, you know, sometimes it's, it's not very uh, encouraging. Most of the times, you know, I'm the only athlete or our entire team, you could count the, the team on one hand. So just to know that we have a lot of young athletes who are, you know, eagerly or they really want to learn about the sport and they want to, you know, be the next Love and Spence or they want to be the next sportswoman of the year or they want to be, not one of the year, but the next sportswoman. Um, you know, I, I feel a little encouraged and I feel, you know, I also feel that I'm happy that I'm able to, I'm the one that's able to help them in that aspect. And you work harder, then just give it a try and you might like it. 
maybe the first time you do it, you might not win or you don't like it, but you know, if you keep working hard at it, then you too can be successful. And hopefully, you know, with them looking up to me, it just shows that, okay, I'm doing something good and I've been in the spot for so long, so there is something, you know, that they can learn from, you know, just not just, you know, coming to training every day, but realizing that it takes discipline as well and not just coming to the track and practicing every day but you have to be disciplined in order to get far. It's always my desire to give back to students whether it's athletes or not. Um, you know I, I love inspiring kids and helping young athletes so I'm, I'm happy that you know they look up to me and I'm the one that's you know able to probably advise them and push them to the next level um, or motivate them. So just seeing a lot of young athletes coming to learn a little more about the sport, is, it's encouraging. All the best in your inter-secondary school sports, in the primary school sports. Hopefully if I'm here, I come and support and see. And for those of you that have competed with at Nationals, I know you all have the talent and the ability because I saw you all at Nationals. And you know, it's, the future looks bright with you all. And if you just continue to work hard at it and get the right technique, I think you too can be a successful or a professional athlete in the future in your own right. Um, at the national championship when I competed last year, um, there were some high jumpers which I saw, you know, they were very talented. Um, I think they just have to take the sport a little more seriously and the coaching system has to be a little more elevated. Um, they have the raw talent, but I th uh, the raw talent, but I think um, having the right coaches and the right people surrounding them, I think they could um, get very far in the sport. And from national championship, after that, that's when I, I hosted the, or I held the clinic. And some of the same athletes, you know, they attended the clinic. And, you know, even during the national championship, I, I was competing with them, but I was helping them at the same time. So I guess it's, it's, it's a good feeling for them to know that yeah, Lovren is helping them even if they're competing with me because I'm not going to be around forever but I, I would love to see you know another young high jumper coming out of St. Lucia so um, you know yeah I feel good helping out the other young athletes coming up. Well for me personally it made me recognize my faults and see what I'm doing wrong whilst I'm flopping even if I don't flop and it helps me so that I can, you know, get into the attitude to begin flopping and stop seizing all the time. I think out of the whole session, the young ones got to have some fun, they got to learn the basics of high jump, and the older ones got to interact with each other because they're all from different clubs, but they also got to get more insight into the high jump. Um, it was very informative for me. I learned a lot about my take off points and how to improve my technique and it basically just made me realize that my goals are actually achievable. I had a lot of fun and, the, and this clinic helped me to you know build up my skills in high jump. For sure I wanted to learn how to jump higher because that's the main goal but I also learned how to mark my run up so I got a proper run up. I mean over the past few years I think that St. Lucia has fallen short in the high jump activity. I think one of our most er talented areas in sports is actually the high jump. Um, we've we have a lot of established high jumpers, General Sheeper, Lovin Spencer, Darwin Edwards, myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so I think with those these coming up, they're pretty much all them around the same range right now and, and for a fact that they're training hard and Really, I think what they've gotten out of today, they could put into practice and become the future. Part of this was for talent identification, and throughout the sessions, we were making notes on persons we felt that the um, the ability is to be a high jumper, and you can't always tell that from one um, high jump clinic. But we got some names, we got some numbers, and the plan is to get those persons some assistance, either through their coaches or you go to their schools and get them some assistance to help get them to be high jumpers. If we have a very good facility, you know, everything is available. I think it would motivate the athletes to come to practice more. They'll be more willing to do a lot of things. And I'm sure we'll be able to get, you know, a lot more, you know, elite athletes coming from St. Lucia because it's, it's really a challenge. Even for me, when I come down to St. Lucia, 
just to train during my season. Um, you know, I, I do most of my training at Minnupulu Park and if it rains, you know, I can't, I can't do my workout and probably I have to drive an hour to Viewfort just to use the stadium and to get access to the, the mats. It's, it's another challenge, you know, the mats, they're not outside and I have to figure out, you know, how to get the mats down to the track. And so it, it's, it's a challenge just to train here. But I think, you know, if we have a proper facility and everything is readily available, I think, you know, athletes are more willing to come out to practice and, you know, put on a, a good performance. How can you use your studies in health promotion to help us reduce Celusia's high rate of diabetes and uh, hypertension? Um, I think, um, you know, at school, you know, we, we studied a broad or a wide variety of stuff. And I think with the hypertensive and diabetes, I think, you know, it, it all stems from, you know, your, your diet and nutrition and exercise. Um, I think a lot of St. Lucians and people in general, I could speak for some people I know, but I wouldn't say the name. Um, you know, they know what to do and they know what's right. But then when they see certain things, they just can't resist and they just can't say no in as much as they know they're not supposed to eat certain things or do certain things. They'll still go ahead and say, oh, it's just a one time thing. Or, But I think, you know, sometimes that's where discipline comes in. So I think if you control your diet, if you know you're not supposed to eat, I don't know, salty things or you're not supposed to eat uh, high fatty stuff or if you're not supposed to eat sugary things or if you have to exercise at least three times a week, whether it's, you know, just 30 minutes or an hour. If it's walk, you can walk, you walk. You don't have to run. Everyone can't, work, can't run. If you have to swim or bike, you know, just little things can help a lot. But I think sometimes it's, it's, it's all, you know, discipline and we need to learn to be disciplined and I think, you know, if they take just little, little steps, it could help a lot. Your last big jump was in Peru, the Panam Games. Talk to us about that experience. In as much as I know it was cold, I pretended that it wasn't cold in as much as it was cold. So, uh, you know, in between every jump, I try to you know, keep warm, I kept moving around, I kept, you know, staying positive. And I think that really helped a lot. It was a lot of pressure because it's like, oh, you're the defending champion, you have to defend your title and blah, blah, blah. So, um, so at the end of it all, you know, I was happy that I was able to defend my title. In as much as the result wasn't the best, um, you know, I know I could have done a lot, I could have jumped a lot higher, but I was still happy that I was able to come up with the win and jumping 187 was good enough for the gold. So, um, I know people don't get back to back, you know, Panam gold medals like this. So, um, being able to do it for St. Lucia, you know, was a great feeling. <laughs> get to 2020 you know I just want to first of all thank you know Bay Gardens you know Bay Gardens Resort for affording me the opportunity to be here to spend a couple of days at the resort um, I had a very long long challenging season and I felt like it was a well deserved break so thanks to them for allowing me to be here and you know just to have some downtime enjoy the um, amenities and interact with the kids and the tourists so, um, so far I'm having a great time. Um, after this, I'm looking forward to going back to the US to commence my training for the Olympics. I know next year, 2020, everyone <laughs> is talking about Tokyo 2020 and looking forward to me being at the Olympics. But, um, you know, my initial goal is to 
go back and try to prepare physically and mentally for that and also you know qualifying as well because you have to you know qualify and get the standard in order to get to the Olympics so my first goal is to you know first qualify and then represent St. Lucia at the Olympic Games the best I know how and hopefully you know I'm able to make the finals and when I do get to the finals you know fight for a medal as well um, it's not gonna be easy it's gonna be a challenge but um, I'm gonna go out there and give off my best and hopefully you know my best will be good enough everything comes down to this moment Um, I've been to Tokyo a couple of times. For sure, I know it's not cold. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been to I've been to Japan a, a couple of times. Um, I love the weather over there, and I think it's it's always really warm when we get over there. So I think it's gonna be you know very good, very good weather. This has been her destiny all along. Retiring is still on my mind. Um, you know, I, 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 like I always say, I can't go on forever. Um, but, you know, Olympics definitely come before right, retirement. So right now my main focus will be the Olympics. Um, and after that, I will just, you know, take it one step at a time and see where we go from there. But definitely retirement is somewhere <laughs> around the corner. Um, but like I said, we'll take it one step at a time and see what happens after the new one.